Angelica Clark draws upon her years of experience in the healthcare industry as a physician assistant, where she's practiced nutritional counseling, weight management, chronic disease management, as well now as natural hormone replacement. She has a passion for wellness, health promotion, and disease prevention. Hi, I'm Angelica, Angelica Clark. I'm a physician assistant. I'm also a nutritionist at Hotsi Health and Wellness Center. And today we'll be talking about menopause and aging. Hopefully I will bring some cool information and new information to you. So um, we will um, be relating how what menopause is, how does it interfere with your health, and mostly um, how it impacts your quality of life as we're getting older, as we're aging. More birthday candles in our cake. So, um, perimenopause, what is perimenopause? Perimenopause is that period around menopause. Rah, that's easy, right? So, it uh, usually starts around th when women turn 30, turns 35, and then the hormones start to decline steadily. And um, that's when women will start to say, uh, my periods are not as regular or I'm skipping a period or my periods are not like they used to be. They're shorter or sometimes they're heavier, or sometimes they're longer, sometimes they don't come. So that's very common with that perimenopausal period. Um, and that's a typical picture of what when we think about menopause, you know, a woman with a fan or a lady at church with a little, you know, uh, fanning herself because she's hot. and. Um, and so it's not necessarily an older person, but um, you know anybody from 35 on, you know, in early 40s can be going through the symptoms. And we'll relate how the symptoms show up and what are they, you know, what do they mean? Are they related to estrogen, progesterone, or what is the imbalance? What is the the problem? Um, one of the things I um, wanted to mention is. Uh, sometimes we don't ovulate and women, they will start to have in inovulatory cycles after they turn 35. And because of that inovulation, which means lack of ovulation, they end up not producing progesterone because progesterone is produced by that uh, corpus luteum, which is the byproduct of ovulation. So that's one of the main culprits of the, the imbalance there. So what is menopause? Um, so. I, I have encountered in clinical practice some women that say, I'm in menopause, I haven't had a period for six months. That's technically not the, not meeting the criteria. The clinical criteria for the definition of menopause is absence of menstrual cycle for a period of 12 months, at least consecutively. So you must have not had the period for at least a year. And um, that's because your ovaries have failed and they're no longer producing their hormones. So does that mean that you have no hormones? Actually not, because once our ovaries fail, then our adrenal glands take place and they will produce one of the hormones that we'll talk about later called DHEA and DHEA will be used to produce the other hormones. And of course, let's not forget our fat cells are not just sitting there. They also produce hormones, um, and so, um, in, in the, especially estrogen. Um, causes of menopause, unfortunately, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Now, not every woman will experience symptoms of menopause. Um, so that's, that's a good thing. But if women do experience symptoms, I recommend that they get the quality of their lives back by using bioidentical hormone replacement. So um, estrogen and progesterone levels drop and but estrogen is the hormone that will cause women to go to a clinical setting and say, I need help, I'm, I'm suffering from menopause. So they will come in and they will be either ir irritable, weepy, um, they will be hot, and so they will have all these symptoms that we'll, uh, we'll be addressing and discussing with them. So that's what causes women usually to go to the clinical setting is to seek help is when they have estrogen um, decline. However, um, like I said earlier, you know, our fat cells do produce um, some hormones, which is estrogen. So um, we'll still have about 40% of our levels of estrogen um, after menopause. Progesterone fa declines really, really faster, much faster than estrogen. Progesterone, by the time you're in your menopause, you produce one one-twentieth 
of your progesterone levels that you did when you were in your 20s. So it's a huge drop, really, really important. And women produce testosterone too. Um, it's, you know, testosterone is known as a male hormone, but it's actually um, produced by the ovaries. And of course, you know, once the ovaries are no longer working because we're going through menopause, then you end up seeing that there is a decline in this, you know, the things that related to testosterone, which is one of them is libido. Uh, surgical menopause. What is surgical menopause? So um, often when we encounter women, they'll say, I don't have my private parts and I uh, had my uterus removed because I was having heavy bleeding or I was having fibroids or I was having pain or in, in cancer and some other things and they end up having their either their uterus removed or their uterus and their ovaries and of course the fallopian tubes removed. So what that really means is that it's going to be a sudden drop in your hormones. It's not going to follow the regular decline that happens throughout the years. So um, that sudden decline will make women feel more miserable and faster. Um, if you have left your, if you have had your ovaries in place, the, the surgeon left the ovaries in place, in about two years, even though they're still there, they're going to go out of commission. And the reason being is because when you remove the uterus and the fallopian tubes, there is some decreased blood flow to the ovaries. So they will stop working anyway, and that's when women will even notice more symptoms. And then because it's not too much sooner after their hysterectomy, they they may not make the relationship and think that it's from the ovaries you know, um, failing. Looks of menopause. So, what does a menopausal woman look looks like? Well, um, they may have a saggy skin or some wrinkles, more wrinkles. Um, they will have discolored skin, so it doesn't look like you know healthy skin like it used to before. And what happens is the skin turnover, the cells they they change, and so um, the the healthier, the plump cells, you know, they're in the surface of the skin, they end up not, you know, being as healthy and then will cause the drier, the rougher, the wrinkled uh, aspect of the skin. Um, a lot of times they have decreased um, discoloration, so they have um, these weird coloration. One spot is darker than others, um, and that's because the ch there is a change with melanin. Melanin is what causes the coloring uh, turnover in our skin. And dark spots. Uh, the dark spots is actually um, going to make people, um, because of that melanin, have this uncomfortable looks and they will go to a dermatologist or they can come to Hoti Health and Wellness Center will help them with some our skin care treatments that we have uh, to offer um, but it's it's also going to make them more prone to having a sunburn. Uh, pimples. Pimples is another one. Um, who likes pimples? <laughs> I don't like pimples um, but you know it's uh, uh, I hear a lot of times my female guests will say, you know, I'm having, I'm, t I'm a teenager again, I'm having all these pimples again, and it's on, you know, on the side of my face, you know, on the back of my neck, and, um, you know, my forehead, and that's a sign of an imbalance, and, uh, and also because those, um, those pores get, get clogged, and it's oftentimes related to an imbalance, again, hormone imbalance, and uh, most likely testosterone. Uh, easy bruising is another common, and uh, or thin skin. You know, women will also say my skin has got so thin, and that's because there is a decreased production of collagen, uh, and collagen is also related to hormone uh, imbalance. So that will make the skin not look as uh, pretty. Uh, weight gain is another one, and we'll talk more about hormones, how they impact the weight. Um, they can impact the the thyroid function and they make you retain fluid so that's where you know the weight gain comes and we'll talk more in depth about it in a little bit. Um, hair changes again the thinning of the hair can be from um, decreased um, production of thyroid or utilization of thyroid hormones and it can also be from um, um, testosterone um, too much testosterone or testosterone imbalance, um, you can have graying of your hair. And usually, you know, 
having hair, uh, gray hair can be caused by several things. Can be caused by deficiency of biotin, can be caused by uh, loss of melanin, and also there are some studies that show that we're going to talk about in a little bit that melatonin actually helps, uh, you know, keep your the color of your hair uh, stable. Uh, people will have more brittle hair, they'll have more facial hair, again that's from imbalance, and weakened bones, so we are at higher risk of having bone fractures. And the reason that happens is because estrogen uh, helps build bones, uh, actually helps prevent bone loss, progesterone helps b build bones, so because of that imbalance we end up having problems with um, the utilization of uh, the breakdown of the, the, the bone cells and um, the, the turnover is going to be decreased and then we end up having bone loss. Um, so there's some, some common um, terms that is used for weakened bones is osteoporosis which is a true bone loss. Um, osteopenia is when you have, you know, um, decreased uh, bone there but it's not necessarily causing the pores or um, it's not as severe as osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is when your risk for fractures are much higher. And um, some studies show that if you use synthetic hormones to replace like the progestins or uh, synthetic hormones you do not get the same benefits as you would if you were using bioidentical hormone replacement. So um, I highly recommend if you have been told you have osteoporosis or you have osteopenia um, that means that you're high risk for fractures and I would definitely uh, seek a healthcare provider um, that understands uh, bioidentical hormone replacement and I would come see us if you can uh, because we'd like to help you with that. Um, imbalance. So we've talked about that word several times and I like this picture here because you know things are supposed to be even not one thing more than another and when God created us he created an equilibrium and we have done so many things that have disturbed that equilibrium. So I put some information that for your own benefit estrogen is the proliferative hormone again it makes the because it proliferates the tissue it makes the tissue of the the lining of the uterus grow and then you'd have a period so if women when they're getting older they don't have as much progesterone remember because progesterone declines faster so then they end up having too much building of the lining of the uterus not enough progesterone to counteract so that's when they have the heavy periods and they have recurrent periods and things like that so um, just think about estrogen proliferative progesterone anti-proliferative so one thing causes the balance the other one imbalance so these are the menopausal symptoms and I really like this chart because um, when you look at the colors here I really mean for you to think that it can happen any time in this time frame so that's when again I said you know women will complain my periods are irregular my my moods are not as good I'm not myself I don't know why I got I'm getting irritable things that I didn't use to you know it didn't use to matter me to matter to me before and I'm so um, grumpy or I'm so irritable I'm jumpy I'm less tolerant um, so those mood swings will take place um, again we talked about the osteopenia, anxiety, we start getting anxious about things that didn't bother, um, the, the low moods, the poor sleep and so we start, the, we start seeing that women don't sleep as, as well as they did before or they don't sleep as many hours or they, they, don't, they can't stay asleep that many hours and uh, we all think about you know grandma grandpa you know they used to go to bed early and then they were up bright and early and that has a lot to do with some of those hormone changes uh, low libido so romantic inclinations decrease decline and they no longer have that desire or the interest in um, those things um, vaginal dryness it's it's there and it, that can impact libido, discomfort, um, urinary incontinence, you laugh, you cough, oops, you gotta go to the bathroom, you gotta go faster, you can't hold um, your, your bladder too longer, you can have bladder discomfort, they can, they can have bladder spasms because the, the muscle tone in there is lost and we'll learn later that estrogen and testosterone has a huge impact on bladder and muscle tone so uh, that's what's going to cause those symptoms and then we have heart disease um, heart disease is an interesting thing because we don't see 
the numbers as high for women until they get to menopause. And then so um, I actually did a talk about 10 years ago um, to a group of people um, at uh, Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield about wellness and we were talking about cholesterol and one of the topics I was presenting was how uh, women were protected uh, from having heart disease, um, you know, until menopause and after menopause, they take, they're the number ones that die from uh, heart disease. And at the time, you know, I was not a PA, I did not understand that quite well, but I was a nutritionist, so I was explaining, you know, data, you know, and now I, it cl clearly makes sense to me. It's because what happens is estrogen helps the vasodilatation of the blood vessels so they don't have those spasms that end up causing a heart attack. And um, you will see later on that um, uh, what causes a heart attack in women is not necessarily obstruction or plaque buildup. They actually have done autopsy in several hundreds of women to see, you know, after they had died from a heart attack to see if it was a plaque formation and they end up ended up finding out that only 30% of them had some blockage and actually everything else was probably from uh, a cardio, um, coronary artery spasms which caused a heart attack. So I find that pretty interesting that even though you may not have all these symptoms, if you're well balanced with your hormones, that will prevent you from dying, you know, from a heart attack. So I like that. Um, so this is for you, you know, progesterone symptoms. Women will come in the office, they have, they complain, they have a large breast, they're, they're agitated, they're nervous, they're not themselves, they're not sleeping as well, they're bloated, they're losing their self-control. And here's another summary about what progesterone does. And I already kind of mentioned to you earlier, so it's a natural diuretic, it helps control the balance of sodium, potassium, magnesium, and that, you know, that shift with the electrolytes so it can have um, a good fluid, um, control and not edema or swelling. Um, it's a natural antidepressant, um, has a calming effect, it does promote libido, um, and again, it, it protects you from uterine and breast cancer, ovarian cancer, just because it counteracts that uh, estrogen dominance. So um, progesterone is cancer protective, and um, I highly recommend that if you have any of these symptoms and you're over 35, that you seek help. Okay, sorry, I'm going too fast probably. And so um, estrogen, uh, we also mentioned um, the cardio, we already talked about the cardioprotective benefits, but I wanted to talk about what the symptoms, what does it feel like having low estrogen? So um, a woman will come in and they have a fan, they're fanning themselves, they're too hot. Um, they will complain that they have um, vaginal dryness, they have urinary incontinence, um, they can't focus, they're feeling like their thyroid's not functioning very well, they have, you know, buildup of um, weight gain in several areas, which is mostly in the thigh and the gluteus. Um, their, their periods are not, you know, as regular, of course, and they end up having, they may even complain that their face is too hairy. Um, that's another thing. And sometimes um, the wrinkles and things like that. So again, estrogen is really important. DHEA, so remember I said when the ovaries fail, the adrenal glands come in. So when the adrenal glands come in, they come in through the production of DHEA. And that's that fancy name, dehydroepi and Drosterone. I always have a hard time mentioning that name. So um, it's produced in men and women, and um, it's also known as the mother of hormones. Just because what your body will do is will convert to the hormone with different pathways to meet the demand. For instance, if it needs to go to testosterone, it go to the testosterone route. If, it, if your body needs progesterone, DHEA will convert to progesterone route. If it needs estrogen, it will go to the estrogen route. And if it needs cortisol, it will go to the cortisol route, which is the hormone that fights us, uh, helps us with stress and fights stress. It helps improve your immune function. 
It protects against Alzheimer's and dementia. It's anti-cancer. It's anti-obesity, so it helps with weight loss. Um, and it also helps prevent the plaque formations and the buildup in the arteries. And an interesting thing about DHEA is they have found that there are receptors to DHEA in, um, in the bone marrow, in the osteoclast, in the osteoblast, which are the cells related to, to bone building. Therefore, there, it's a very, very important hormone for um, people that have osteoporosis and osteopenia. Um, testosterone, so we hear about, you know, testosterone or T, you know, testosterone is the hormone that's uh, related to male performance, but women also has testosterone and they will have those symptoms that like we talked about, the muscle tone and the belly fat, they're tired all the time, they, their romantic inclinations is decreased. Um, and um, bioidentical hormone testosterone has been shown to help uh, decrease low blood pressure and it increases the good cholesterol. So it has also some other impacts apart from well-being. Some other things are happening in the background that you're not necessarily seeing it happen. Um, it helps boost your sex drive. Um, it helps um, the outlook of life. So people say, wow, I'm more optimistic, I have more drive, I have more stamina, I can get things done, the house got cleaned, you know, I have been dreading to get through my closet and get those old clothes out of there, or I haven't been in my attic for a long time, now I feel like doing it. So you end up having your quality, quality of life back, you feel like you can get things done. So um, it's a very important hormone to be balanced. And um, there is some, um, a myth, you know, that they say, wow, if you start on testosterone, you'll become like a man, you'll become, you know, you'll have those masculine characteristics, and that's not true, because if you're getting well balanced, doesn't mean that you're going to get higher, higher levels as a man does, that will cause those characteristics. Um, an important thing I wanted to mention is, by the time you reach menopause, about 50% of our production of testosterone has, it's gone. So it's kind of interesting how that correlates. And thyroid. Now, how does the thyroid work in regards to estrogen? What, does it, what is the connection? What is the relationship? Basically, the relationship is when you have a hormone imbalance, your sex hormone binding globulin will actually increase. And what that means, it will bind so binding globulin, it will bind it to the thyroid hormones and will make it inaccessible or useless. Your body, your cells will not be able to utilize it. So then you have a deficiency of thyroid hormones at the cell level, therefore you start developing symptoms of hypothyroidism. So people will complain, symptoms of hypothyroidism, they will have, you know, they're cold all the time or their hair's falling off or they're tired, they're gaining weight, they're the, the, their nails are brittle, their skin is dry, they're having brain fog, um, those are all symptoms. Um, they're constipated, um, they can't focus, so all those symptoms are um, of low thyroid. Melatonin, I love this picture, you know? Everybody says, oh, sleep like a baby, and it's so nice, but even now we're seeing the babies have problems with deficiency of melatonin, and there are so many things going on out there. So melatonin is a hormone produced by the pineal gland. It's a tiny little gland in the brain, and it's a sleeping agent. A lot of people know this. You can buy it over the counter. Um, it helps you have a quick, you know, uh, uh, ability to fall asleep and you can have a restful sleep. Um, usually if you take it over the counter or a prescription dose, you have to take about 30 minutes to 60 minutes before you go to bed. Now melatonin uh, production is actually stimulated um, as our um, pupils start to dilate as it get darker. So um, if you've ever, you know, shed a light on your eyes or somebody's and you see the pupils contract, what happens is in the presence of light, our pupils contract. When with the absence of light, our pupils dilate. So that subtle movement of our pupils, you know, dilating as it gets darker ends up helping you produce more melatonin. It tells your brain, hey, it's getting darker. Let's produce melatonin so we can go to sleep. 
but we have all these technology things, we have a lot of light, we have our cell phones that we're playing on it, we're reading our iPad, so we have all this light being, you know, directly exposing in our eyes and our pupils, which ends up disturbing our production of melatonin. And so we, we end up increasing our risk of cancer. They have found that actually melatonin will help decrease the proliferation and development of cancer cells and they will actually cause apoptosis. Apoptosis is when the bad cells, the cancer cells, they'll actually die. So it's like amazing. It's like a very, very, very important hormone that we're not paying attention by, you know, exposing ourselves to so much light in, in the evenings and not thinking about it. And also there's some studies that it helps um, women uh, improve their thyroid function, they improve their gonadotropin levels, so therefore improves their fertility, menstruation, so all their hormones are better leveled. It's easier for them to go through menopause, they're less depressed. Um, there are some studies actually with uh, migraine treatment, uh, with people that uh, use melatonin, people that have uh, pre uh, premenstrual de uh, disorders and PMS symptoms, so it's a very good um, hormone. Um, it's a, a, actually it's interesting too because it's, um, it can fight free radicals so it can help you, you know, have less aging so your skin looks prettier. So have you thought, have you heard about, oh if you sleep too much you look, your skin looks be beautiful. That's true because of that effect on your skin too. If you sleep well that means you have enough melatonin and they go hand by hand. So. Um, Anti-aging foods, um, I'm not going to go too much in depth on this topic because there is um, uh, one of the presentations that will be just about diet and nutrition, but these are the, my favorite foods for anti-aging. Avocados, they have the good fats, the monosaturated fats, um, that helps with the cholesterol, helps the skin, the moisture, the skin. Vitamin E, uh, vitamin E helps with hot flashes. So, you know, avocado can help with hot flashes too because of the vitamin E in them. The cruciferous vegetables, it helps your body uh, converts the, convert the estrogen, the bad kind of estrogen, into the most useful estrogen kind, so it's important. Uh, it also fights toxins and cancer. Garlic, there's, there's a lot of, there are a lot of studies about garlic, and so if you eat a clove of garlic a day, raw or cooked, it can actually protect uh, against heart, uh, heart disease and cancer. And there's a study there for your information. Watermelon is good, it has a lot of vitamins. You know, the more colorful, the more nutritious the, the food is. So vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, has selenium that will help with your thyroid, helps, has essential fatty acid that helps with your skin. It has zinc, zinc helps counteract estrogen dominance. Um, vitamin E, which helps with hot flashes. So I mean, it's, it's an amazing uh, fruit and it's you know it's summertime and you know there are a lot of good ones out there it just makes me want to go to the store after here and go grab some um, water you know we all know that water is important and the more water you drink the healthier skin looks like the better you feel so it also helps your body get rid of toxins and uh, you know get the real balance how things are supposed to be in equilibrium in your body um, growth hormone the growth hormone is um, well, no, it helps us grow. Um, so it impacts body composition, muscle strength, bone strength. And people that have um, deficiency of these hormones will often have problems with their hair thinning, um, the cheeks are sagging. So, the, you know, there's an imbalance with the growth ability there. So their muscles are slack. And um, another thing that I think about, you know, growth hormones that people don't think is that they're anxious you know, they're, they're restless. And again, that goes back to hormone imbalance. So I have some data and some studies here for you. Um, infertile women were followed for 14 to 34 years, and those that were deficient in progesterone had a five-fold greater incidence of having breast cancer, premenopausal breast cancer. So remember, I talked about perimenopausal, around 35 and you start having the symptoms but you're not going through the full change, your ovaries have not completely failed, well that is important. If you get symptoms you should see somebody that understands well so we can get that imbalance corrected because there is a protective benefit in progesterone. 
The, this one is, um, the, these authors found that actually progesterone during pregnancy and the identical hormones do not increase the risk of breast cancer. And actually, when women are pregnant, they have decreased risk of developing breast cancer. And they went back and found out it's because of the progesterone is high during pregnancy. So again, progesterone is protective. Um, then there are several other studies there I, I mentioned earlier, the premenstrual dysphoric disorder, um, you know, people that have problem with their moods throughout their cycle related to the hormones, um, melatonin and weight gain, migraine and melatonin, um, sorry, let me go a little bit slower so you can read. So just about melatonin there, about the migraine headaches. Um, they actually compared, this study compared melatonin with a medication called amitriptyline that's often used to help prevention of migraine headaches and this, this, is, this was a very positive study. And um, I have another one here that, um, you know, women that took melatonin at bedtime it had improved mood and reduction symptoms of depression and thyroid function. So it even impacts thyroid function. So if we sleep well, things are more balanced. Remember that. You know, when you have that to-do list and all these things, sleep is important. And it's highly recommended you try to have seven hours of consecutive restful sleep. So if you can start turning off the lights in your house, um, you know, after dinner and maybe have, you know, lower, you know, or dim the light so you don't have as much light exposure, you know, put the cell phone down, read the real book or, you know, things like that. Instead of exposing your eyes to light, you'll be able to produce more melatonin and have a better sleep. Uh, ovarian cancer is um, an interesting thing out there. It's on the rise. Um, it's hard to be picked up on exams. There are not really specific tests unless you have an ultrasound. Um, it's not part of the routine um, evaluation, yearly workup with your gynecologist, you know, to have an ultrasound unless you're having symptoms or pain. And it's on the rise and it has been linked to the imbalance between progesterone and estrogen. So again, one more thing you can do. Um, now we will learn about menopause and balancing hormones with the diet. So it's important, of course, to have a healthy lifestyle. Um, I'm not saying that everybody needs to be on hormones. I'm saying that everybody is that is suffering from hormone imbalance and everybody that's, you know, having decreased quality of life, that's a sign of the imbalance. And they should seek help to see help address so you can take care of that imbalance and also prevent some of these illnesses that are secondary to the imbalance. And conclusion. Um, Menopause and anti-aging, so there are many anti-aging methods out there. Again, preventing the imbalance is the best thing to do. Um, if you're having symptoms, get in touch with us at www.hotzhwc.com. You can call us and schedule a complimentary consultation and uh, we'll be able to go over your symptoms, what you're dealing with, uh, and we'll be able to tell you how we can help you and hopefully get your life back. Um, these are some references, um, some readings that I recommend, of course, you know, Dr. Hotsi's book. Um, if you have not read, you really need to read. Um, you can actually go to our website and we can give you a um, complimentary copy. Um, and there are some other books there that I use for reference and those um, are good, reputable authors that we um, suggest for you to read and we can help you and our phone number is 281-698-8698 that is our address we're in Katy, Texas and um, www.hotzhwc.com I'm so glad you were able to take your time to be here with me today to learn about menopause and anti-aging I hope I gave you some information to encourage you information is power so I have I hope I have empowered you to make changes so if you're suffering or having your life back or having some things that you you feel like you need to get that address come see us call us we can help you I hope you have a blessed day thank you